imagine having a cluster of containers each housing a vital component of your application but how do you manage them all how do you ensure they communicate effectively scale effortlessly and recover from failures autonomously that's where kubernetes comes to play to steer through the sea of containers hey friends welcome back to my channel if you are new here my name is mayank and i am a software developer in this channel we we'll discuss about the tools and strategies that we use in devops today we will learn about the basics of kubernetes and how it can help you in managing your deployments effectively let's get started now what is kubernetes it is an open source container orchestration platform it was developed by google initially we also write it as k8s Kubernetes automates the deployment, scaling and management of containerized applications. Now, why do we need Kubernetes or an orchestration platform? Earlier, we used to have this monolith applications. Then we have changed them to microservices and then we have containerized them. Now, it becomes difficult to manage them. User has to set up the host machines and then the containers with the required resources such as networks and volumes and managing these containers using scripts and automation tools sometimes can be impossible so what is the function of an orchestration tool orchestration tool helps in high availability which means almost zero or no downtime this means that your application is available to the user all the time the next one is scalability which means to scale up and down your application based on the load and the third one is disaster recovery which means the tool will take a backup and restore in case of any natural disaster such tool is kubernetes and we are going to learn about the basics of kubernetes now let's understand about the kubernetes architecture kubernetes operates based on master slave architecture it consists of a control plane which manages the cluster's overall state and orchestration operations and worker nodes which run the actual containers each worker node runs the kubernetes components which includes kubelet which communicates with the control plane the next one is kube proxy which manages the network routing and the third one is a container runtime which can be either docker or container d These worker nodes takes instruction from the master and modify the number of containers present in the node based on the workload the number of worker nodes can be increased or decreased now what is the function of master node so the control plane consists of several components the first one is api server api server is the entry point of kubernetes cluster there are different ways to connect with the api server one can be the kubernetes dashboard the other can be through api for autom automation the third one is via cli the next one is control manager control manager keeps track of what's happening in the cluster whether something needs to be restarted or repaired the next one is scheduler it is responsible for scheduling pods on the container it takes this decision based on the resources available in the worker node and the resources that are required by the container and the most important one is etcd it stores the current state of the cluster it has the status of each node and each container inside the node if needed we can restore the complete cluster using etcd snapshots you can have multiple worker nodes as well as master nodes having multiple master nodes help you in recovery of your cluster to the previous state in case of any disaster Now let's go through the Kubernetes components. Kubernetes achieves this orchestration through a set of powerful features and concepts. So let's see how the worker nodes actually run the container. Each worker nodes have some pods. Pod is a basic unit of deployment in Kubernetes. They encapsulate one or more containers and their associated resources such as storage and networking. One node can contain more than one pod. A location of pod is decided by scheduler from the master node and it depends on the available resources present in the node and the resources required by the containers in the pod. Pods have their own IP address but they keep on changing with the deletion and creation of new pod. So it is difficult to connect to the pod using the IP address. 
So this issue is resolved by another component called service. Services define a stable network endpoint to access a set of pods. They enable load balancing and service discovery within the cluster. Now how these resources are created? If you remember from the master node, we have this API server. The API server receives the instructions either from the dashboard or from the API or from the client. These instructions are passed in JSON or YAML format. For the creation of pod, we pass the instructions to create a Kubernetes component called deployment. Deployment is the declarative approach to define the state of a pod. This means we define what we desire and Kubernetes try to accomplish that state. So that's all for today. We have covered the basics of Kubernetes and its major components. In our upcoming video, we will discuss more about how to create and manage your own cluster. If you find this video helpful, please press the like button. Thank you for watching. See you soon.